uh, for the technical services team. Um, and today we are going to be doing uh, an introduction to our electronic registration family. So that's going to include uh, the LCR2, the LCR600, as well as the LC, uh, spotlight on the LCR IQ and, and a short demonstration of that product. Uh, so again, today's um, class, much like last, uh, the last class is going to be taught by our uh, lovely and talented uh, regional manager team. Uh, so today we have uh, Wyatt, uh, Bill, and uh, Pedro that are going to be on and, and each giving a different presentation today. Um, so I appreciate them stepping in and doing this today. Again, today's class is more of an overview to get you familiar with the electronics, um, what they can do, what the features and functions are, and what abilities we have uh, today. Um, aside from that, uh, so in two weeks on June 9th, uh, we'll be doing a class specifically geared towards the LCR2 uh, installation, setup, uh, calibration, that type of class. So just specifically focusing on the LCR2 register. Uh, and as we go forward in the weeks to come, there'll be other classes, one on the LCR600. Uh, and then uh, finally, we'll have several classes uh, later on, uh, July, uh, August timeframe, uh, really deep diving into the LCR IQ. So those of you looking for the deep dive, those are coming, um, you know, in, in future uh, episodes of Luke Controls University. Uh, but again, today we're going to be focused on um, the uh, just kind of an introduction to all of our electronic register family that we have today. Um, the other class is coming up in June, uh, June 23rd. Uh, another one that a lot of people have been looking forward to or asking if we can do is uh, really focused around calibration. Uh, so we're going to cover how to handle mechanical calibrations with mechanical registers and adjusters and how to time gear plates and then also get into electronic calibration. So we'll be deep diving on, on all of our electronic products and how you would calibrate and, and set up the basic calibration on those registers. So anybody looking for the calibration training, uh, June 23rd, uh, keep that date open um, and we'll be covering those. So a um, couple of housekeeping things. Um, as we go through the presentation, everybody's been muted for now, but uh, there'll be points throughout the presentation where you'll be able to unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, there's also a chat feature uh, on your on your screen uh, up at the top. Uh, normally with Teams, there's a little chat bubble. When you click that, you'll be able to type in uh, questions. Uh, so while the presentation is going on, you can type in a question and, and those of us that aren't presenting will try and address those questions as they come through. Uh, so please feel free to use that function. But again, uh, throughout the presentation, there'll be a couple pauses where we can ask questions. And then again, at the very end of the presentation, uh, you'll be able to ask questions uh, at that point as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but if you, you also have a hand raising feature. So if during the presentation, you do have a question about a specific topic that the presenter is talking about, you do have the opportunity to raise a hand and ask that question. But for the most part, again, if you want to hold your questions for the pauses as well, that that'll be a good time to uh, to bring those in. Uh, so without further ado, I think that is all the announcements I wanted to make. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Wyatt Spruch and he's going to cover the uh, you're doing LCR too, right? All right. All right. So let me let me unspotlight here. It's all yours. Okay. Let me know. Let me know when you can see it. I can see it. Why? You good? Okay. I think I've seen these. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good morning. Uh, welcome, everyone. As uh, Jeff says, I think it's our fourth installment for uh, LC University uh, 2021. Uh, it was good to see a lot of familiar names popping up on the on the list whenever whenever he was talking. We're admitting people in, so it's it's good to see that we've got a good crowd. Um, again, this uh, for for those of you that don't know me, my name is Wyatt Spruce. Uh, I've been with LC almost eight years um, now, uh, along with. Bill Hughes and Pedro Jimenez we will be covering um, the LCR electronics today. Um, as Jeff said, jump in, raise your hand, ask questions as needed. Um, there, there is a chat function and uh, uh, like I said, the, the raise your hand function. Um, again, more uh, LC employees are on the chat functions. They should be able to answer questions as they come up. 
And then, uh, as Jeff also mentioned, this is an, uh, an intro or an overview to the electronics. So it's 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 going to be basic functionality on the component on the components of what you'll likely see um, out in the field. So we'll go ahead and jump into it. Um, to start off, um, covering something that many of you are very familiar with, the LCR2 register. Uh, the LCR2 in this form came out, I believe, in 2001 and has been the, uh, the cornerstone and benchmark of the electronic uh, registers ever since its release. Um, it's a very rugged and uh, proven technology that's treated uh, customers and distributors very, very well for the past, uh, past two decades. <clears throat> First off, um, why, you know, why do we want to go to an uh, electronic register? So if you can see here in the, uh, in the top corner, it's our class one, div one enclosure. We have two different, two different options for the LCR2. Um, class one, div one register is used in hazardous locations where you may need explosion proof uh, components. Um, we typically see this when we're dealing with solvents. Um, or if we're in, the, in, in a vapor space with uh, flammable fumes. The one here on the bottom is something you're probably more familiar with, class one div two. It's what you're gonna see on the back of most uh, LPG trucks, refined fuel trucks that are going up and down the road. Uh, these two registers, um, as you can see here, most of us are very familiar with the, uh, with the red knob. It gives us the, uh, the ability to, uh, to pump and print, do a product calibration on four different products. Uh, we can also do multi-point flow calibration. We'll get into that a little bit more detail um, later in this presentation. Um, gives us the ability to do presets if we want to do a preset of a certain amount of gallons when at uh, or when making a delivery. We're able to uh, uh, to add those numbers in. If we want if we want to give 100 gallons to a customer, we can put in 100 gallons, allow the register to go, and if it's equipped with a valve. It will close the uh, close the valve at 100 gallons, and that's uh, that's what the ticket will print, and the customer will receive. We also have the ability to do uh, to watch flow rate. If we want to monitor uh, how much flow we're getting through the meter through the through the system, we can do that. We can watch temperature if the system is equipped with uh, electronic temperature compensation, and we can also interface with uh, with NCAP computers or other systems that uh, the register can send data to. Um, that can then be uh, potentially sent to um, sent out to uh, a back office or something like that via Wi-Fi or cell modem. Uh, let me get back to my screen. Here we go. <clears throat> so, what are the benefits of electronics? Well, first of all, we uh, we replace the mechanical registration. Um, most notably, we have the ability to consolidate what has uh, historically been a number of of different uh, mechanical components all into one. Um, <clears throat> you can see here uh, just a, a list of essentially what all can be eliminated or consolidated into the electronic register. We have the mechanical compo components of counters, printers, presets, the mechanical adjusters that are built into the stack of the meter, uh, mechanical temperature compensation, micro switches, um, um, pulse driven or uh, counter driven pulse devices, uh, linkage, uh, manual linkage that may be going to a valve to do presetting, uh, gear plates, and then again, the, uh, the indication of uh, a flow. Other advantages of the LCR2, um, electronic registration is ex extremely accurate, uh, much more accurate than you can get through uh, mechanical means um, with mechanical adjusters. We have the ability to do electronic calibration adjustments. Um, so when we when we go to a prover and we send a certain amount of fuel through the prover, we can simply type in those gallons into the electronic register. It automatically calculates ca the K factor and the register at that point is calibrated. Um, we have the ability to, to do electronic temperature compensation is optional. We see it heavily on um, the LPG applications, refined fuel, diesel, gasoline, not so much, um, but it's allowing us to, to compensate for the expansion and contraction of the fuel um, whenever temperature ri uh, rises or lowers throughout the course of the day or throughout the course of the year. We have the ability to do um, shift totalizers and accumul accumulative totalizers. We can do inventory totalizers. We can generate tickets um, in different formats. Again, this can be set up and flashed onto the board. We can do uh, point of sale and taxes built in. Um, we can send an electronic pulse, typically with a mechanical register. If you need uh, an external pulse going to 
uh, maybe an external PLC or something like that. Uh, you'll have to add a, um, a pulser to the side of the mechanical register. It's adding additional components to the system. Uh, the LCR2 registers, along with our other registers, uh, have the ability to send that pulse output to those um, either third party devices or, um, or secondary pieces of equipment that you have in the field. Um, we can also do electronically uh, actuated valves. Um, again, we can utilize valves for presets. We can also utilize valves for security purposes, um, making sure that um, only authorized deliveries are being made. Um, if something, let's say a timeout, if the system or if a meter is sitting for too long without flowing any product, we can close the valves, we can shut out the system and, and, and verify that someone isn't stealing fuel or making um, making unauthorized deliveries at other locations. We can set up for alarms, pump controls, additive injections, things like that. Again, a lot of this is done with um, with pulses or with with alarms um, that we can send. Maybe maybe we want to turn on a, a, a red light whenever something um, something gets out of range. We can do that. Another thing I, can, I mentioned earlier, multi-point calibration. Um, typically, when we calibrate a meter, uh, we're doing it at a single flow rate. Um, we're very accurate. We can dial that that flow rate and that calibration in um, on that single single point. But if we're delivering fuel over a wide range of the of the meter, let's say from 20 gallons all the way up to 100 gallons, that uh, calibration curve is going to change over the um, over the different flow rates of that meter. So we'll be able to calibrate, let's say at 20 gallons a minute, 40 gallons a minute, 60 gallons a minute, whatever it may be, and essentially flatline that calibration curve, um, giving the ability for the meter to be as, as accurate as possible. We have some someone out there, I've got background noise on my side. <laughs> Another thing we can do, um, as I said, we can we can calibrate up to four different products in the LCR2. Um, this comes into effect maybe when we're doing different uh, different viscosities of blue boils or something of, of that sort. Um, we can we can do uh, four different calibrations for each one of those products to make sure that each product, when it's being metering, is um, is accurate. We can do something as easy as pump and print um, with an LCR2. Uh, typically, or you know, sometimes people say the electronics are getting a little too sophisticated. We don't need that. We just, you know, we just want to be able to to, to pump out some product and, and print a ticket. With the the red knob on the LCR2, we can do that. We can we can turn it to pump. We can make a delivery. We can flip the red switch to print, and and we're done. So it's it's very very simple operation. The LCR2 is compatible with uh, pretty much any flow meter on the market. Um, we do want to look into, um, we need to add the um, um, the kits to make sure we can mount it properly to other, other meters. But uh, again, if there's something out there, a Neptune or whatever it may be on an existing vehicle, there's no reason why we wouldn't be able to put an LCR2 on top of it. Uh, we have uh, different ways of communication, RS-232 and 48, uh, 485. Again, we can you know, talk to third party systems. Uh, we can send and communicate the information that we need to send to our printer to print tickets. Uh, we can interface into other PC devices. Uh, we've got, and, you know, as, as we showed earlier, class one div one and class one div two enclosures. We can operate over a wide range of temperatures from negative 40 up to uh, 160 Fahrenheit. We have weights and measures approvals of US, Canada, uh, as well as other countries. Um, <clears throat> Next, what's the, what's the advantage of the, uh, of the LCR2 register? Uh, well, first off, we, you know, we, can, we can improve operator efficiency, um, the, the tickets, now that are being printed out, it, it helps to eliminate the manually uh, written tickets and shift reports at the end of the day. Um, there's there's always a potential for human error whenever we're writing something down. It may not be legible. We not, may not be able to read it. Um, mistakes may be made. Numbers may be um, you know transposed or something like that. So by by doing the electronic tickets, we're we're helping to remove some of that uh, potential operator error and uh, helping with the efficiency of getting out and delivering the fuel. Uh, we can also help reduce loss. Um, again, as as we mentioned, or as I mentioned earlier, we have the ability to put in a timeout on the register. So if, if we don't see flow going through the system for a set amount of time, 
we're able to close valves and uh, and print off tickets if needed to close out that transaction to make sure that again the driver isn't going and making unauthorized deliveries at other locations and then potentially charging back to um, you know uh, the in incorrect customer whether it's intentional or unintentional. The uh, the temperature compensation elect electronic temperature volume compensation is much more responsive when dealing with electronics and is with the mechanical compensation. Um, it, it reacts much quicker. It's taking temperatures, I believe, twice every second and reporting that back to back to the register and, com and computing um, the, the volume of the product based on based on temperature. Um, we already went over the you know the different calibration points where we can do four different um, calibrations for diff four different products and as well as the multi-point calibrations to uh, to give our the, the the best accuracy over the wide range of the of the meter. <clears throat> Another other advantages, it's a very flexible platform. Um, we have the, the ability to serial interface with software. Again, they take advantage of whether it's handheld, um, handheld units that are out there, portable computers that can be inside, laptops, things like that, um, and, and pretty much interface with w whatever technology comes our way. Um, we work with the third party vendors very closely on the ability to communicate and grab information from the registers. All of this um, we're doing with um, with pass through information so we're still within weights and measures the, the register itself is still controlling the delivery and making the delivery we're just able to communicate um, what happened in the register and what happened in the system to these third party systems here's some quick math on some of the savings that uh, that you can see when um, when dealing with electronics over mechanical the first one, we're going into a calculation of the responsiveness on the ETVC versus standard mechanical. Um, essentially, if you're taking 500,000 gallons a year in, in product that you're pumping out, and because of the responsiveness of the electronic registration, you you can potentially see up to a, you know say a half a percent of less shrinkage. And at 225 a gallon, um, we're looking at you know 5,600 and some change in annual savings. So. In the first year itself, I mean, the uh, electronic register and temperature compensation is uh, is, is well paid for. Um, the next, we talked about the the, the ability to a shift uh, shift ticket at the end of the day. Again, this helps with driver productivity. Um, at the end of the day, instead of spending, let's say, in in this example, a quarter of an hour a day manually writing down a shift ticket, if there's a hundred deliveries um, in, in a given year at you know, 15 minutes a piece times let's say he's making $22 an hour that's an annual savings per driver of roughly $550. The next is the um, the reduced maintenance um, on the electronics versus versus the mechanical registration. Um, this example here is showing that um, let's say over the course of two years we have um, we have six hours worth of maintenance whether that's on the mechanical preset or a mechanical tvc um, you know mechanical register printer whatever it may be um, of those of, of those uh, the six hours that are put in um, if you're paying a tech or a shop or something fifty dollars an hour to, to repair those items and replace those items. Again, we're looking at roughly $150 uh, per unit annually by going to uh, electronic registration over, um, over the mechanical. We have the ability to view um, different things here on the LCR2. Our typical screen is going to be set up as as you see it here. It's it's going to be the the, the gallons delivered um, as it's as it's going through the meter. Uh, we also have the ability to uh, to view the flow rate. Um, we can look at totalizers of, of how much product has gone through that register over the course of a of amount of time. We can look at temperature, the time of day. If we need to go in and do a preset again, I mentioned earlier, if a customer only wants 100 gallons of product, we're able to do that preset. If we have the electronic um, electronic preset valve on the system, we can put in in this example where it says settings preset 200. This customer wants 200 gallons. We can toggle up in the by using the the, the arrows on the on the right side of the LCR2, put in 200, start the delivery. At 200, it'll close the valve, print the ticket, and um, and the customer can see see what 
uh, exactly what he what he received and get the exact amount of product that he needed in that um, whether it's a tank or whatever it may be. We can do um, the electronic single point calibration on the register. So again, if we're if we're doing a we have a prove route and we're trying to prove the meter, make sure that it's accurate. If the prover um, comes in and says, you know, that, let's say the register runs 100 gallons through it, but the prover shows in this example uh, a little over 98 gallons, we're able to type in 98 gallons to the register, 98 gallons and what, 2, 0.024 um, into the register. It automatically calculates K factor and, uh, and essentially become, it, uh, it calibrates the meter uh, so that we have an, an accurate meter for, for moving forward. Also, it gives us the ability to switch through the products. Like I said earlier, we may have uh, this may be a lube oil application. We've got different uh, viscosities of lube oil. Um, we can go through and change from product one, two, three, and four, depending on which um, uh, which lube oil we're running through the system um, during that delivery. Next, um, flashing software. Um, this is something we covered in, in, in much more detail. I believe it was in our first training. Um, if you missed that training, um, feel free to go back and look at it. Um, if you've been signed up for LC University from since the beginning, you should have received, I just took a snip here from, from my email, um, an invite to join LC University video training. Um, in, in that session, or if you go to that email, You'll be able to set up a, a password and then log in and see the um, the all these recordings, these videos that we've been doing. So if you want to go into a, a more in depth training on flashing software, feel free to go back and look at that. Um, if you if you didn't receive that email, please let let one of us know. Email one of us. We'll um, we'll make sure we get you a, a link set back out so you can log in. Um, but anyways, at some point in time, most of you have probably heard from one of our service techs or, you know, one of us potentially that you need to have your board flashed or you don't have the software, the correct software loaded on the board. We need to we need to flash it. Essentially flashing, flashing the board, um, flashing the, the register. Um, typically, it has to do with updating languages, ticket formats, software, things like that. Um, it can be done a couple of different ways. Um, it typically, well, sometimes, well, I'd say a lot of times we have to flash if, if we have an issue with an existing board, a board may go out and we need to replace that board. You may have one in stock, but it may not be loaded with, again, the, the proper ticket format, the proper language, whatever it may be. So you have to um, essentially log on to the board, update software before we can install it to, uh, to the actual register. <clears throat> How can we do it? Um, the most easy way, uh, the easiest way of going about it is, is using the, our, our easy command um, software. Um, we're able to log in to the LCR2 and LCR600 boards. Um, with easy command, we can also save configuration. So if we're going and doing no, numerous trucks or, or numerous registers that have very similar configurations, we can save those configurations in easy command and then simply upload that software um, to to the board. Um, so we don't have to go back in and reset each um, uh, each board from from the ground up. Here's some examples of the different software styles, different things you may have to load on. Um, so again, first off is you know what, what type of software we're we running. Um, so you see. Um, there on the left hand side, you know, basic software, aviation software, um, <clears throat> different languages there in the center. So again, typically here for us in the States, it naturally it'll be SL200, but if this thing, you know, if, if the register of the board is going to another country or somewhere international, we're able to load different language um, software on. Uh, the, the, and the last software that that gets flashed onto the register is the ticket formats, the um, the printer tickets. So we have short forms, long forms. We have one specific for aviation, specific as you see there, you know, suburban propane, um, you know, specific for some of the end users that want specific tickets or print uh, tickets printed in specific ways, whether it's to fit on um, their pre-printed uh ticket forms or whatever it may be um that's that's where we go in like i said we can flash that information onto the board for that specific customer 
like I said earlier, um, can you put LCR registers on other meters? Of course, um, we just need to make sure we have the correct adapter when ordering. Um, so you can see here is, you know, on the on the right hand side there, there's a, a number of different adapters that we can utilize to to mount our LCR 2 600 or IQ register onto um, to different meters. The next thing, um, these are some of the optional um, electronic um, components that can go along with any of our LCR registers, uh, again, including the ones that are going to be discussed by uh, by Bill and Pedro here in a little bit. Um, we have different uh, different uh, different valves here. We have a picture of the block valve. Again, this this gives the ability to to do presetting to where if we set in a, a set amount of of uh, product that we want to send through the meter, uh, the register can then open and close the solenoids on the valve up here allowing product to flow through the system um, once we get to a preset we can then de-energize these solenoids close these valves and essentially shut off shut off flow through the system this is also where we can utilize the uh, the ability to stop unauthorized transactions so again if a system times out it's been sitting idle for too long the lcr2 register will uh, essentially close the valve, print the ticket, close the transaction. We have uh, pod pulsers here in the middle. There are times that uh, the register, uh, for whatever reason, may not be mounted directly to the meter. It may be due to space. Um, it may be cosmetics. Um, we want to you know, place, place the register in another location. We can do so by, by placing this pod um, or pulse output device on the meter itself and then send a pulse output um, to the register, wherever it may be mounted. Uh, again, it you know, may be just around the corner on a shelf or something like that, but uh, that's that's where we use utilize this pulse. This pulse can also be used to send to, um, to other uh, other registers. Sometimes you see it going to our sister company, Top Tech. They have uh, they have units that are used typically in terminal applications. We can send a pulse to uh, to their equipment as well. Uh, we have the the multiplex box or the mux box. Um, this is utilizing we have. A uh, two meter system. We're able to send information from both registers. Um, again, two meters on, on a single truck. We can send that information to into the MUX box. Um, and then from the MUX box, we can print from a single printer. So it, it eliminates the uh, uh, you having to have two printers because you have two registers. It's essentially a, a pass through for. Um, for the information coming from from both registers and you can see here you can switch between between the two registers you can also um, plug in your lap pad to uh, to communicate back to the registers talking about uh, electronic temperature volume compensation here's a here's a look at the kit um, here again it's it's a probe that goes into a into a thermal well we're actively taking the the, the temperature of the product the register can then calculate how much that product has grown or contracted um, based on uh, 60 degrees uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, the, the warmer a product gets, uh, the more it's going to expand or larger it's going to get. Uh, the colder a product gets, it's going to start contracting. Um, so with the temperature compensation, we're, we're able to essentially compensate for that growth and shrinkage, and we're always selling product based on the 60 degree Fahrenheit temperature. Um, we have the, the lap pad here, um, gives us the ability to, to input information to the register. It allows us to do presetting. It's essentially a, an external keyboard that allows us to communicate um, to, to the registers. Um, typically, it's mounted inside of the, the cab of the truck. Um, and again, it's, it's used for, for daily use by, by the drivers to interface with the, with the systems in the back. Remote displays, um, these are used from time to time. If for some reason you do need a, a larger view, you're trying to see how much, how much fuel is being delivered, but you're not quite close enough to the register to see it, um, we can send pulses out to, to the, uh, the remote display and, uh, and see from, from significant difference or from significant distance from the truck. Um, I believe it's two and a half inch um, sized uh, LED uh, numbers there, so you, you can see it from a, from a long distance.
Printer types. Um, this is somewhat of a dated slide here, and um, I wasn't 100 percent sure on what all is still out there. I know some of these probably don't exist or they're no longer manufactured. Um, some of them you may simply not see anymore in the field. Um, our primary um, printer that, that is supplied is the slip printer that you see in the, um, the upper left hand corner. That's typically standard for most of our um, uh, fuel delivery trucks, whether it be LPG or, um, or refined fuels. Here's a, uh, another up close picture of that uh, of that printer mounted into the cab of a truck. Um, it, it's a very, very rugged printer, very similar to the the LCR registers themselves. Um, it, they're, they're made to be bounced around and, you know, in the cab of the truck. Again, these these need to be inside. They're not uh, they're not rated for 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 use outside. But um, again, it's it's very rugged. It also operates over a very wide temperature range, similar to the LCR. Um, and has a there's a photo eye in there to make sure that the, that a ticket is inserted into the system. It actually sees it and then locks the ticket into place, ensuring that once a delivery is made, there will be a ticket printed and there will be a record of that um, of that fuel delivery. Um, here's a, a a more uh, or a closer look at the at the lap pad I just discussed earlier. Um, again, it, it's a way for us to communicate to the registers while we're inside the cab of the truck. Um, again, whether we're doing presets, whether we're um, you know programming pricing, things like that in the system, we're able to do it through um, through the lap pad. It, it also comes in handy if you're doing calibrations. You can do calibrations through the lap pad. Um, Again, it's very, very large, large and easy to read keys, um, a very durable keypad. Um, these, again, these things are made to be used on a uh, on a daily basis. Other accessories, and, and again, this is, you know, some of these, you know, looking at cables here, um, pre-wired cables that we can send out just to make it easier on the installation. We have uh, the three-way adapter there. Um, see down here. Um, this allows us to to go from our data cable uh, coming from the registers. We can then patch in the lap pad here on this port, and then continue out with the data cable to the uh, to the, to the printer. Um, we have brackets over here if you'd like to to mount your printer, your lap pad, mux box, things like that. We can supply these that can be mounted in the truck. Um, again, kind of lock in those uh, those accessories into the truck um, so they're not just laying on the floor and, and bouncing around. We also have the uh, the printer cable. Um, it, it allows us to convert the, the 12 volt uh, DC power to the 24 volt that is required um, inside of truck applications to, to power up the, um, the electronic slip printer. Closer look at the, the remote display. It's sorry, two and a quarter inch red LED display up to uh, six digits. Um, it's easily uh, visible during the day or night and interfaces directly to the LCR, <coughs> excuse me, the LCR2, the LCR600 and, uh, and the IQ registers. Next, a, a quick look at our, at our valves here. Um, the, the first two, we're showing the uh, diaphragm block valves very standard in um, in LPG applications long as long as uh, as well as many of the refined fuel applications. You'll also see the the E7 valve there in the middle on refined fuel. You will not see that on um, LPG. It is not an LPG rated uh, rated valve. Uh, the last one is the EP series or our uh, electro pneumatic valve. Uh, this valve is is actuated open and closed by um, by pneumatic air. Um, we utilize this valve um, again on, on many refined fuel applications, but it, it works very, very well on uh, very viscous or thick products. So when we get into lube oils and things like that, um, it, it's a very, um, very robust valve that 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 allows complete closure um, with with thicker products such as lube oils. Closer look at the uh, the TVC. Again, we've we've gone into this into some detail, but again, we're just we're actively taking temperature uh, from the system and ensuring that um, due to uh, either shrinkage or the expansion of the product, um, that we are we are accurately measuring the true volume of the product um, as it as it goes through the meter. 
And again, it says here, you know, it's taken taking readings uh, twice per second, um, which which gives it a, a much more accurate result than what we'll see through uh, the mechanical means uh, with mechanical uh, registers. We also see here the uh, the thermal well. Uh, this is where we we insert the um, the temperature probe here into the system. It, it allows us to to take the temperature of the product without actually opening the system. So in LPG, this is uh, this is very important. Um, if we were to have to 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 thread out the thermometer each time, uh, we'd have to bleed down the system, things like that. But uh, with the thermal well, we're able to to place the probe into um, into the strainer basket, into the system, and uh, and and take take the temperature readings, and um, we, we do not have to to break the fluid bar barrier if uh, if we need to replace the probe. A quick look at a, a standard setup here. We've got a couple. Of, it's a dual meter system here, sitting on a refined fuel truck. Uh, we're sending information back to our printer. We've got a lap pad tapped in and we, sh we should we'll have a mice will have a lap pad adapter um, in between here that we can then interface from our lap pad back to our registers communicate with our registers again if we need to set presets or whatever it may be um, printer and power cables are then going to uh, the fuse panel on the system next one we're looking at a uh, at a standard LPG set up um so again we have we have a meter we have a shutoff valve you know, we're talking about you know the, the preset valve here solenoid valve we have a strainer we've got temperature compensation coming in here on the front side of the the strainer housing we're running our conduit back into the truck we're going to printer um and then powering it back to back to the fuse panel <laughs> different delivery tickets um, again we were talking earlier about software and flashing the the correct uh, ticket software onto a system um, you can see here we can do something as simple as um, uh, you know simply just printing the amount of, uh, of product delivered and what the product was and that can be the entirety of the ticket sale number date and time or we can go in and do the the long format where we're doing uh, total gallons, gross gallons, net gallons. Um, you know, the, making sure showing here that's temperature compensated. We can put pricing. So again, that that all goes back to picking the the correct ticket for the for the customer for their needs. And that again, that's all done through the the flashing of the software onto the onto the boards. Talked earlier about um, the, the shift tickets um, or, or shift print tickets um, at the end of the day, saving some time for the drivers. This is an example of, um, of a shift print at the end of the day. Uh, this driver doesn't look like he did a whole lot um, this day, but uh, typically per product, you're going to see the amount of, uh, of gallons that were that were pumped off um, for each product over the course of the day. Again, saving saving time at the end of the, at the end of the day or at the end of the shift for the driver instead of having to to manually write and calculate these numbers, uh, the register itself does it for you. Um, so why do we have these trainings? Um, you know, typically, you know, prior to the, you know, or, or pre-COVID, uh, regional managers and, and, you know, our inside service guys would travel around. We do, we do a lot of this um, on site. Uh, you know, we're working on with LC University. Again, typically it's done uh, at the factory um, or at least, you know, at a location close to the factory. But the reason is we, you guys typically in the field, um, our distribution channel, our OEM channel, y'all are the face of the company for us. Um, y'all are the ones that are interacting um, when the meter gets installed, when the register gets installed. You're making sure the installation went properly, um, that everything's working correctly. You're setting everything up. You're, you're helping to calibrate. You're working with the third party suppliers, um, typically typically doing the, the initial training. Uh, again, if it's something as simple as, as pump and print on a register, you're helping helping out with that. Um, and, and you're making sure the customer is, is satisfied. So that's that's why it's very, very important that, that we're able to hand, 
to have these these presentations and that you guys are attending them. Um, let's see. Yeah, so naturally, again, training on our part is very essential for you guys to make sure you all are up to date. Um, you know, if the time comes and you have questions, feel free, please, you know, reach out to us, reach out to um, technical support, you know, call the factory, get someone on the phone. We're, we're more than happy, more than happy to, to help out with with end users or customers that need need help or guidance. Um, one thing we, we did recently do is we released our um, our online product manuals. Um, very easily viewed on a phone or a tablet or something if you're in the field. Um, I believe you, you, when you go to our website, lcmeter.com, I believe it's under resources and uh, technical documents. Um, under that, there's a there's a tab that says new online product manuals. Just uh, simply click on that and you can you can scroll through on the phone, find whether it's for uh, you know, the LCR2, LCR600, or IQ, you can click on it and then scroll through the entire manuals there. They're online. Any questions? That's, uh, that's it for my portion before we jump into, into bills. Thanks, Mike. If, if anybody has questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself real quick and we'll try and address those as we're switching between uh, presenters here. All right, I think I've handed it back. Hi, Hi Wyatt. Good morning. Can you hear morning. me? Yeah, Hi. Good morning. Yeah, it's uh, Halloway from Saul, Saul in the Caribbean. A quick question. Um, we, we bought one of our bobtails. It actually has a mechanical um, register. And I just want to know how, how challenging will it be to change it over to an electronic register? I can jump there, Wyatt. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Hi, Jeff. Yeah. I'm doing great. Thanks, Jeff. Good, good. Hey, uh, how are you? Actually, it, it, it's not a hard conversion to do at all. Uh, you know, when, when, when it has a mechanical registration, the LCR2 is designed, uh, actually all of our registers were designed to fit that same mechanical footprint. Um, you know, depending on the type of meter it is, and I think uh, how I most of your meters are LC meters, I believe That's down there. Correct. So That's the conversion is real simple. You just uh, that when when you get the register, it comes with an LC drive shaft. Uh, basically, what you're going to do is replace the existing mechanical drive shaft with that extended electronic drive shaft. Remove the adjuster, and then the register just mounts down in the same spot as the mechanical register. Then all it is is just running the cables. So in your case, you're running a printer. Uh, and a power supply cable. So those are going to run from the register back to the front of the truck. Uh, and then, you know, the, the power is going to wire into the power, uh, you know, fuse panel. And then your uh, your um, your signal cable is going to route up to wherever you're going to mount your printer in the cab of your truck. So it's, it's, it's not a hard installation to do. I've done it many times. You know, retrofit like that, the hardest thing you have to do is get under the truck and run the cable. Uh, so, you know, I, it's something that I could probably have done in two to three hours easily. Oh, that's good to know, Jeff. Thank you so very much. And right. a great presentation as well. Thanks so much. All right, Howard. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Jeff, are you able to see my presentation? I am, Bill. You're, okay. The floor is yours, my friend. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Sorry, uh, hey, Bill. So, sorry, this is Dan real quick. Uh, we do have a couple of, couple of questions on chat that came in, um, Jeff. Um, oh. One of them was, uh, is Arabic language going to be available for LCRIQ? Okay, yeah, I was just reading through those. Um, that actually, Dan, that'd be a good question. I'm, I I thought we were working on, on on a version of that, but I'm not sure if there's a timeline or anything out there for Arabic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we did have um, we did start on that process, but due to the complexity of the language, um, that we it, it got put on pause while we're we're doing some more analysis on that. But um, I would anticipate that you know. Um, we do, we do expect that it will be available. Um, we don't have a timeline at this point. Um, and then uh, Yuri had asked, um, didn't see a DC to DC converter in the power supply? Yeah. Oh, yep. And I see that. Uh, Yuri, hey, Yuri, good to see you. Hey, um, you know, I, I, I'm aware, you know, especially on 24 volt systems, uh, uh, because of the power can sometimes be much more than 24, you'll see people use the DC to DC converter. It's not real common in most of our applications with the LCR uh, product line. Uh, but yeah, there, there are filters out there available if you need something to condition your power. 
Um, we actually have part numbers in our system for converters, but we don't sell a whole lot of those, uh, since, especially since they are available commercially online. Um, but uh, we really don't have too many problems in the 12 volt market uh, here in North America. But when we do get into the 24 volt market uh, systems, uh, you know, if the truck is running hot, if it's running more than 28 volts, you'll want to have some sort of power conditioner. But we don't tend to have a lot of issues with that with the uh, LCR family of products. Okay, thank you. Dan, is that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay, all right. Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are in the world. I know we've got people from all over the world uh, uh, looking in on this, so uh, just thank you all for participating. Um, those of you that don't know me, I'm Bill Hughes. I've been with Liquid Controls um, a little over 15 years now, and uh, most recently been uh, heading up the aviation, uh, the military, as well as a dispensing uh, sales group. Um, so uh, um, what I'm going to talk about today will be uh, kind of a continuation on what Wyatt was talking about on the uh, LCR2. Now, um, everything that he told you about the LCR2, we're just kind of think of that because we're going to, you know, the LCR600 was was an extension of that. Um, and, and what I mean by that, so so Wyatt said, told you that um, the LCR2 was launched in 2001. And so um, over the years, like, you know, all good electronic equipment, um, you know, things change. People ask for, for more um, uh, capability. And uh, over the years, um, through customer or voice to customer, uh, you know, we had people asked or customers asked for, for a lot of different things. And, and so we kind of took that and put a compilation of that together in the LCR 600. And, you know, once the kind of four categories, I like to say that, you know, the LCR 600 was developed around was we started to get into process automation. Um, and and I'll, I'll go into that a little more in detail, as well as um, uh, open protocols. So we talked about it and we have one open protocol. We did it with the LCR2. We also wanted to have the open protocol so that third party uh, uh, customers, vendors could interface uh, with the LCR 600 and then electronic ticketing. Now I know that um, uh, Wyatt talked about pump and print and we could print a mechanical ticket and the LCR 600 can do the same thing. But we also heard you know, where they wanted to be able to send that ticket to an, uh, to another device and, and, and capture it. So electronic ticketing became something that, that we tried to do. So, you know, what are the enhancements over the LCR2? Well, we wanted to improve the functionality. Again, the LCR2 is a workhorse. It's still out there, still requested. Um, but there was some functionality that, that was people had asked for that we wanted to improve. Uh, meet the growing requirements of the marketplace we were in. On this one, we wanted to do a full feature point of sale at the register itself. Um, well, you could do point of sale with the LCR2 using the lap pad, but you know we wanted to kind of build it into the LCR600. Uh, we wanted to give you, we wanted to display more information. And, and the first thing is obvious when you look at the LCR600 is that the display is much larger now and the digits become much larger. And because it's much larger, we can display a lot more information. Um, we wanted to increase the functionality of it, but we didn't want to, you know, change the, the ease of use. So we wanted it to be easy, you know, easy to use. We would, you know, if, if a customer wanted to move to the LCR 600, we wanted them to be able to use, you know, if they'd been using LCR 2s or mechanicals, we wanted them to move, be able to transition quickly to the 600. Um, and, you know, we wanted the quality that you expected from the LCR2 already. Um, you know, by doing all of this, our, our, our plan was that we could, you know, increase the number of stops per day by increasing the efficiency. Um, help the customer grow their business. Uh, and as I said, improve efficiency. Uh, simplify service and diag uh, diagnostics. You know, excuse me, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, Wyatt was talking about, you know, servicing and, and looking at diagnostics, we now implemented that on the register itself. But we wanted to maintain that familiarity. And, and what you saw with the LCR2 and the LCR600 was 
that uh, we kept that red, uh, the, the red control knob. That's kind of the basis for, for the running the, uh, the, uh, the register. Uh, as you can see, you know, uh, Wyatt talked on a lot of these already. So, you know, we, we kept the same mounting as the LCR2. So it mounts in the exact same place. You could take a mechanical register, a mechanical stack up uh, off of the uh, off of a meter uh, and, and put an LCR600. Or if, it, if somebody wanted to uh, uh, change from an LCR2 and go to an LCR600, the retrofit was real easily. We use the, it uses the same cabling as the LCR2. Power and data cables remain the same, connect directly to a 12 volt power source, same terminal configurations. When you open it up, you'll see that it's the same circuit board that we used with the LCR2. Uh, the same accessories um, uh, we could interface to the, the ETVC uh, for temperature volume compensation, optical air eliminators, uh, shut off valves, printers, and remote displays. And, and one thing I want to touch on with the remote displays, I know Wyatt mentioned, uh, you know, how far you could see it, but one of the features, and I always talk about this with our remote display, there's a lot of remote displays out there. You can buy different types of register uh, displays um, that run off of pulses. But, but what happens with ours is our, either the LCR2, the LCR600, or now the IQ talks directly to our large displays so that no matter whatever you see on our LCR 600, you will see it displayed on the uh, large remote displays. That doesn't always happen if you just use an off the shelf uh, uh, display. So that's a key feature of our displays in which I like to sell and, and, and I think customers like. So um, some of the highlights, um, as I said, we maintain the rotary knob for pump and print and weights and measures ceiling. Um, so that, that all remains the same. You know, if you become used to using, you know, run, stop and print, uh, we, we maintain that on the, on the LCR 600. Uh, the same base and mounting is the LCR 2. So like I said, it mounts directly on top of uh, either, you know, our, our meter or, or could be remote mounted. We have a lot of these remote mounted, even in the cab of a truck if somebody wants to use a pad. This is where we, we integrated an alphanumeric keypad. Um, so Wyatt talked about with the LCR2, the use of a lap pad, we were able to get, uh, move away from that with the alphanumeric keypad that we built into the LCR600. Uh, obviously, in eight years of, uh, of running the LCR2, you know, microprocessors and memory chips had, had uh, improved, so we upgraded the processor and the memory on the LCR600. Uh, we had a full-featured point of sale, um, uh, and, and we'll talk about that a little more in detail. And then this large multifunction display with large digits, and, and, and as you can see there, you can see the volume dispensed. But at the same time, we can now watch the, the flow rate, we can watch temperature, we can watch presets, all at the same time on the display. Some of the feature sets of the LCR600, so the, the keypad, like I said, no need for that lap pad. It had a large display. The diagnostics are, are on screen. Um, so if you had a failure of a printer something that would come back and you could it gave you some some diagnostic features that were available on the screen uh, for calibrations and products same as the LCR2 um, it can be upgraded by uh, to the to the point of sale in the field so if you wanted to use point of sale it could be upgraded uh, in the field uh, with just uh, working with our technical services group getting a code and uh, uh, they could walk you through that uh, the LED light uh, backlight for clear visibility. We had a transflective display, and what that what a transflective display means is that in bright sunlight um, you can still see the display. That was the whole idea behind that. We give clear full text descriptions on the screen, so everything we do uh, you can see now is on the screen. Multiple security levels for uh, drivers, uh, supervisors, and, and factory settings. We maintained that LCP protocol. That was important to us. That was important to our customers. That you know that open protocol, so that you could use that uh, uh, working with third-party devices such as handhelds. Uh, we we gave you a scalable pulse. The LCR2 was limited on its pulse output, 
But with the LCR 600, we now had the ability of giving you 10 pulses per gallon, uh, 100 pulses per gallon, uh, depending upon how you had it set up. We also introduced you to toggle flow rate uh, with the LCR 600, and I will go into detail on the toggle flow rate here in a second. And then it stores the last 250 deliveries. So we had the ability with our memory to store, store deliveries. When you upgraded to the LCR 600 uh, point of sale, we now gave you the ability to do 16 calibrations. So you could do lube oils, you could do you know just a variety of products. You could do uh, um, on-road diesel, off-road diesel, 100 products, uh, names and prices. Uh, there were 16 uh, tax structures that you could build into it, volume discounts, um, cash discount st uh, structures, uh, and you could add miscellaneous charges, you know, so maybe you get a call uh, in the middle of the day and somebody says, hey, listen, I need to have you make a delivery. It's an unscheduled stop. Um, I want you to go do that. You know, we're going to charge them um, X number of dollars to, to do that. So that might be a miscellaneous charge. And we, we did the price preset. So you could say, I want to deliver $50 worth of, uh, or 50, whatever the, the local currency is, um, of, of, of product. And we could uh, set up the preset based on, uh, on, on, the, on the local currency. So talking about the base functionality. So the larger display. So you know, we, so we can display the volume and unit measure with temperature compensation on the screen. Um, we can also uh, view additional information such as, so the totalizer are all there. So you've got a gross and net totalizer. We do flow rate, uh, price per unit, total price including tax, total pricing of delivery, preset, product name and calibration type. That can all be seen on the screen now. Uh, configurable screen. So we give you the customer the ability to, to split the screens and to uh, uh, build them as you want. So you know if, if, if you're running a refined fuels truck or if you're running an LPG truck or even running aviation trucks, we had configurable screens for you. So the home screen was setting up deliveries. We had delivery screens uh, av available for critical uh, information during delivery. Uh, and then that split screen that can show flow rate totalers and pr totalizers and presets. Easy navigation. We wanted, again, the LCR2 was easy to navigate. We wanted to make sure that, you know, with the LCR600, the drivers felt comfortable. Is that, is that me or somebody? Else? Okay. Um, full calibration screen for users so the calibration that uh, that uh, Wyatt talked about we now give you uh, calibration screens so that you can see what you're doing um, you know weights and measures certainly likes that uh, directs driver to diagnostic screens um, select preset product and set price all from one screen and is always turning that red rotary knob you know locks and edits and starts a delivery so there was no change in, in how we how we structured that here were some default screens. Um, the top left screen um, was just a detailed pump and print. Uh, Wyatt talked about pump and print. You know, for those that that's all thought, that's all they wanted to do, we could create a pump and print screen. Here you see, you know, it's an LPG application with the temperature rate. It'll show you what the flow rate is in gallons per minute, and then the totalizers. Aviation, it's really important for them to see what the volume dispensed is and also the gallons per minute. So we took that screen and gave them those two pieces of data, but now we integrated a smaller screen for the differential pressure. So we could we inter introduced a differential pressure um, and you could watch it. And if it obviously if it ro rose to the to a, too high of a level, it would shut it fueling down. So that was the aviation screen. Uh, you can see there we have a, a volume and a preset screen. So if you had a, a preset uh, in, in, in either gallons, liters, or in a monetary uh, uh, figure, we could uh, uh, put that in there and you could see it the, the gallons counting up while the remaining preset counting down. And then the, the detailed uh, uh, point of sale screen where it shows you, um, you know, what the, what the uh, fuel was. In this case, it was diesel, it's a distillate 
price preset, price per unit. We could tax it. Um, you could add the miscellaneous charge. So it was a detailed uh, point of sale screen. Uh, the keypad and the rotary knob. Rotary, top, rotary knob we maintain for ease of use. Um, it provided physical confirmation for the state of the register, so you always knew if you were in pump, uh, print, or, or you know, run, or, 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 or what have you. Um, also, the alphanumeric keypad eliminated the need for the lap pad, as I said. And this will allow you to configure, calibrate, and operate the point of sale. So um, as part of the point of sale, as you enter customer uh, information, uh, tax information, that can all be done from the uh, keypad. Uh, we, we introduced a tactile feel uh, keypad on this register and uh, that the keypad was large enough to be used with gloves. We wanted that to be, you know, known so that, you know, even though a driver's got gloves on, he could uh, uh, navigate the, the, the keypad uh, without any, without taking his gloves off. Some of the additional features, LED backlight for clear visibility, transflective display for direct, using direct sunlight, clear full text description, so no more cut off uh, uh, descriptions of what was happening, uh, multiple security levels for, for uh, uh, security purposes. We maintained the uh, LCP protocol and eliminated the need uh, for the lap pad. And as I said, this is where we inter integrated the first uh, version of, of toggle flow rate, uh, which was uh, also carried over into the IQ. So the toggle flow rate was a programmable flow rate set point. It, it uses the, the two relays. We call them AUX1 and AUX2. If those of you that have used the LCR2 um, or the LCR600, has seen, um, know that the relays are in there, they're, they're labeled AUX1 and AUX2. But the toggle flow rate is a programmable flow rate uh, that energizes AUX1 and or AUX2 output signals. Those output signals remain active above the set flow rate with value and deactivates when the set rate set, when the flow rate falls below, below that value. And I'm gonna show you a, a description on, on that in a second. But, where we see it used a lot, so let's say you've got a common output is an air, AOV, air-operated valve, uh, for the pump's bypass. When the flow rate value is, attain, uh, is attained, the AUX1 output is energized. Uh, this will activate an air solenoid directing air to the AOV of the pump, closing the bypass valve. This changes the pump from low-pressure mode to full-flow high-pressure mode. When the flow rate falls below the set point, the AUX1 de-energizes and the air is removed from the AOE pump and re returns to low flow. AUX2, you could use it for changing the engine uh, RPM throttle. So by increasing the engine speed uh, shaft, at the, uh, increases the pump input shaft RPM. This allows the uh, flow, the, this, this will add to the pump, pump's flow output. The flow rate value in this field should be uh, Below the flow rate with a fully open nozzle or the output will never turn on. Another application of this field is set the value as a maximum flow rate at which a valve should be closed. And, you know, this is, goes into, we go into full, uh, uh, more detail, page 50 of the LCR 600 uh, operations uh, manual. And so here we go. This is going to be a, let's see if we can get this thing to operate now. Bill, I don't have the sound. Does it have it? It does not have the sound. You may need to unshare your screen and then check the box for sharing your sound and then uh, reshare. I had it. It should have gone. Yeah, it worked yesterday. All right. Rated valve, AOV, a liquid controls M10 N1 meter configured with an LCR 600 register. A normal. Do you have it now, Jeff? It, it yeah, I can hear it. It, uh, it just went away, but I could hear it. All right, let me let me uh, let me start it again.
This video demonstrates fueling processes utilizing a tanker truck equipped with a Corkin PZ-10 pump with air-operated valve, AOV, a liquid controls M10 N1 meter configured with an LCR 600 register, a normal flow hose with automatic nozzle, and a high flow hose with delivery nozzle. The LCR assembly features an optical air eliminator, high capacity strainer, and two-stage diaphragm preset valve. A key advantage of the LCR 600 system is that it optimizes the fuel flow rate without operator intervention. To begin low flow delivery, often referred to as fleet fueling, the three-way diverter valve is positioned to the normal flow hose. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the run position. With the lever on the automatic nozzle partially depressed, low flow delivery will commence. Air is not allowed to the AOV on the pump, so the bypass valve in the pump remains open, limiting the outflow of fuel from the pump. The pump speed remains constant throughout the low flow fueling process. As the fuel flows through the meter assembly, rate of flow and gallons per minute show on the display. When the low flow fueling process is complete, the nozzle lever is released to the closed position and the flow of fuel ceases. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the print position and delivery ticket is printed for the customer. To begin normal flow delivery, the three-way diverter valve is positioned to the normal flow hose. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the run position. When the lever on the automatic nozzle is fully depressed, normal flow delivery will begin. The LCR 600 automatically and seamlessly responds by activating the AOV on the pump, closing the bypass valve, which increases the outflow rate of fuel from the pump. The increased rate of fuel flow and gallons per minute show on the display. When the fueling process is nearly complete, pressure is slowly relieved on the nozzle lever. The LCR 600 automatically deactivates the AOV on the pump, opening the bypass valve, which decreases the outflow rate of fuel from the pump. When the fueling process is complete, the nozzle lever is released to the closed position and the flow of fuel stops. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the print position and delivery ticket is printed for the customer. To begin express flow delivery, the three-way diverter valve is positioned to the high flow hose. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the run position. When the lever on the high flow nozzle is opened to the one-third position, low flow delivery will commence. Air is not allowed to the AOV on the pump, so the bypass valve in the pump remains open, limiting the outflow of fuel from the pump. As the fuel flows through the meter assembly, rate of flow and gallons per minute show on the display. When the lever on the high flow nozzle is moved to two thirds position, normal flow delivery will commence. The LCR 600 responds by activating the AOV on the pump, closing the bypass valve, which increases the outflow rate of fuel from the pump. The increased rate of flow and gallons per minute show on the display as the fuel flows through the meter assembly. When the lever on the high flow nozzle is moved to the fully open position, express flow delivery will begin. The LCR 600 automatically responds by increasing the engine RPM, which also increases the pump speed and the outflow rate of fuel. The register display shows the corresponding increased rate of flow and gallons per minute. When the fueling process is nearly complete, the nozzle lever is returned to the two-thirds position. The LCR 600 responds by decreasing the engine RPM, which decreases the pump speed to the normal delivery rate. The display shows the corresponding decreased rate to normal flow and gallons per minute. When the fueling process is almost finished, the nozzle lever is returned to the one-third open position. The LCR 600 automatically deactivates the AOV on the pump, opening the bypass valve, decreasing the outflow rate of fuel from the pump. When the fueling process is complete, the nozzle lever is moved to the closed position and the flow of fuel ceases. The switch on the LCR 600 is turned to the print position and delivery ticket is printed for the customer. 
This completes the demonstration of the LCR 600 AOV normal and express fueling system operation. For more information on all LC meter fueling systems, products and features, as well as distributor, builder and contact information, please visit our website at lcmeter.com. Well, I hope that gave you a little better uh, overview of what uh, toggle flow. It's actually a, a really nice feature of, of the 600. Uh, if you have questions about it, any further questions, certainly you can ask this afternoon or, or your uh, regional manager about it. Um, again, uh, you know, we have with the LCR 600, we also introduced the point of sale functionality. Um, you know, we, we wanted to be able to go beyond one product, one price, one tax. So as I said, uh, 16 product cali uh, calibrations, 100 product names, 16 volume discount structure, 16 cash discount structure, 16 tax structures. Any discount and ta uh, tax structure can be linked to a product name, and multiple product names can be linked to a calibration setting. So uh, this had the ability of a full-featured um, uh, point of sale. Also, for those in the aviation industry, this is where the LCR 600 was where we introduced for the first time Flight Connect. Uh, Flight Connect was a software application that runs on the LCR 600 electronic register. It was always, it's always been embedded in the LCR 600. Um, it was uh, provided automatic fueling data capture at the gate or at the customer's plane. Uh, track and record the transaction data. We did real-time wireless transmission of fueling data back to the back office. We did that uh, via modem and in some cases um, uh, radio hand or radio systems. No third-party handheld device was required. So we took the third-party handheld out of the out of the equation and went straight from our register, the LCR 600, right to the back office and then fully configurable for either a commercial application or private FBO operations. So we simplified the data collection and counting into the into plane fueling. So we could do it from uh, hydrant carts or re, uh, aviation refuelers right to the back office. The system provided an automated, automated wireless system that collected the transaction data at the point of transfer and it sends the data wirelessly to the office PCs and prepares the data for the back office software. With that, we were able to, each transaction was transmitted to the back office. Fueling information was always accurate and required, uh, and all required details were available. Um, fueler, fueler ID, uh, uh, plane, plane ID, gate, any information you wanted to provide, we could provide to the, to the back office. Um, Flight Connect can be customized to collect the data that, that the customer needed. So we were able to take all the data and configure it, uh, whether it be through an Excel spreadsheet uh, or, or some other CVS, CSV formats. Um, and then there was da the data collection fields. Uh, we configure the Flight Connect uh, before each fueling. Before each fueling, the fuelers are prompted with a pre-configured series of data fields. Uh, that could be tail number, that could be gate location, that could be location where the uh, aircraft was, was headed to. Data fields are configured with the Flight Connect office, so it was always configurable. And the meter data was always included. So as you see, a ticket on the right there, um, you know, included average flow rate, average temperature, average density, total weight um, of the fuel, um, and a complete transaction. But the data fields available, invoice number, start and date and time, you can read all of those. It's a, but um, we gave you the ability, it's very configurable, and gave you the ability to collect all the data, uh, as much data as you wanted or as little data as you wanted, and push that data from the LCR 600 uh, back to the back office. And uh, Jeff, that's the end of... Uh, my configure my show and what i'm going to do is i'll now pass it over to uh pedro on the uh, lcr uh iq so let me end that thanks Jeff. yep pedro you may need to unmute yourself as well 
Yeah, well, now I am unmuted. Am I good to go? Uh, well, Bill, you have yourself pinned to the screen right now. How do I unpin myself? Go to your name under the chat, under the participants function, the three dots, and just unhighlight yourself or on. Uh, here, I can. No, no, it says you're not spotlighted. I don't know. Uh, go ahead, Pedro, and just try and take over. You should go right over him. All right. So we're going to go window. Are we good? Yep. Yep. All right. Let me begin the show here. Uh, let me move this over here. Um, okay. All right, everybody. Uh, uh, my my colleagues talk Pedro? a lot, so I, I apologize for them taking up so much time. Uh, Pedro. Yes, Pedro. sir. Hey, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, you're you're not sharing your screen. Uh, it's it, you're, you've got your camera and your screen reversed right now. So. Okay, wait a second. One moment. Okay. So. Thank uh, you, sir. But you're not in the presentation mode. Right. Uh, OK, well, one second. I think I need to do this here like this. And we'll do this. Are we good there? Yep, that looks good. All Thank right. you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that delay. I was apologizing also for my uh, very chatty colleagues here. They didn't leave me much time, so we're going to try to move on. Um, well, thanks again uh, for the for your time. And uh, obviously, as you if you didn't catch my name, you don't know me. My name is Pedro Jimenez. I I'm director of uh, business development for Latin America uh, and much involved, obviously, in in, in, in all of our uh, process here. Um, so uh, th this is an introduction uh, presentation. And the reason I'm um, qualifying that is that there's so much to talk about with LCRIQ and I've got less than 45 minutes here. Um, and we actually had planned a little bit more, but we're going to try to get to everything. And we've actually selected some of the things that we think are fairly relevant and representative of LCRIQ functionality. So we're going to basically discuss concept, uh, some design criteria, some features, and some specifications. So uh, let's move ahead here. Okay, first of all, uh, one of the first things that we did that was different with LCRIQ from the LCR2 and LCR600 products is that rather than go from a product design, in other words, designing a product, we went to a, uh, we thought through a platform structure. And, and the reason uh, for this was the fact that uh, as we uh, contemplated the markets that we are serving, uh, certainly the different ones were evolving at, at different paces and with different requirements. And we wanted to have a platform that would accommodate all this um, and not just be limited by what feature a particular product had. So the platform becomes the basis through which uh, all the functionality uh, is, is developed. And then obviously the device in this case becomes the LCRIQ, kind of like a, a Windows type of, of, of example, right? So as you can see from this uh, screen here, you know we're, we're contemplating the LPG, the aviation, and uh, certainly the refined fuel market, uh, and and the different uh, requirements that they had. So uh, in terms of developing this product to platform transition. Uh, we had to develop the platform itself, right? And, and if you think about what the platform is, um, the, the platform is uh, basically contains the logic and the controls, let's say for the fueling systems, um, and certainly using sensing devices, which we'll touch up uh, a little bit more on uh, a little later here. But basically the central platform will also manage that fueling logic within the register. And so making the register the central point uh, of control and, and certainly data gathering and, and managing it, okay? And so our platform is called Central Logic. So when you see that uh, in, in IQ tied it, as you see at the end, obviously there, there's a tie-in because the platform for LCR IQ is Central Logic and the LCR IQ becomes the device once again. All right, um, I'm not gonna go through all the details here, but just wanna show you the progression uh, Wyatt and Bill already talked uh, quite a bit of this. Uh, you know, obviously uh, earlier we provided our meters in 1950s with uh, uh, mechanical registration. To this day, there are some uses for mechanical registration depending on locations and and, and complexity or conditions of, of where the equipment is installed. But everything started moving in the 1990s over to 
uh, electronics. And we were one, Liquid Control was one of the first to come out with uh, electronic registers. And uh, Wyatt already touched on the two versions of the LCR2. Uh, and up to this day, as um, all of my colleagues have mentioned, you know, the LCR2 is still used. Um, and in some cases, it's become uh, on, on very basic operations, you know, the, the main very simple to operate uh, type of device uh, for customers. Um, in other cases, it's become part of a, of a system. In other words, it's become a component. So it's been integrated into other developments, right? The periphery around the, surrounding the uh, register itself. Um, Bill mentioned the LCR 600 in which we increased, you know, certainly the, the, the display size. We included the, the keyboard, uh, not having to use the, the lab pad. Uh, but one of the important things that I want to highlight and, and that drove us also into the LCR IQ was the fact that as these markets and needs were evolving, one of the things that, that became clear was that we needed to have uh, more memory and that data became more and more important to customers uh, in order to manage their business and, and monitor and control as well. Um, so with the LCR IQ, albeit a, a great uh, a device and, and all, but it only could, would store the, 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 the last uh, uh, delivery, if you will. And so in order to, for it to give it more memory, you need to put peripheral devices that would that would store additional uh, deliveries uh, or transactions, if you will. With the LCR 600, we, we, we certainly increased that, as Bill mentioned. Uh, where we did it up to 250 uh, uh, tickets or transactions that we would store in, in, in the system. But that was, again, it was trapped inside, in this case, the, the, the register. So it didn't really push them out unless peripheral uh, architecture was built around the, the, the device so that these uh, could be sent out, you know, just like we did with LCR2. Um, obviously, and uh, when we talk about IQ, and as you see, you know, we actually launched the IQ in 2019. Uh, we contemplated all the all, all the things, all the capabilities, and, and the, all the experiences that we learned from our, our previous registers, um, and 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 we certainly incorporated all those positive things. And we we obviously tried to even enhance further uh, the functionality, the ease of operation, as you'll see in, future, in the next slides, uh, but also so, some additional uh, uh, things that that are important to customers. Um, so, without further ado, let, let, let's get on to this. Um, so I want to mention this because this is important. I know some of my colleagues think this is a lot of uh, just uh, presentation material, but no, it's important. And just the four main uh, factors, criteria of design, which were obtained through VOC, obviously with customers, which is important because we're doing it for the customers, right? Developing the, the in this case, the platform. Um, the first uh, priority was fueling safety, right? And we know that there's a lot of sources uh, that could affect the, the safety up op, uh, the operation safely right of, of, of fueling and as you can see there i'm not going to read the slide for you you know there's certainly human factors and training of the staff etc and so our conclusion was to to be able to provide a, an intuitive and guided operation to the lcriq the second was fuel quality of course it's very important because you know when customers are using and or buying you know the fuel you know, they, they, they expect a certain levels of quality and to meet certain standards, and we need to be able to provide those. Uh, certainly, there's variability in, in the process and the equipment or sometimes even requirements. And so this is where we incorporated uh, the criteria of being able to have adaptive sensing, meaning being able to monitor the process in which the product is being handled, right? And there might be injection, et cetera, a number of different things that, that can happen, but we need to be able to, to control and monitor those. The third point is uh, operating efficiency. Uh, and again, uh, we're, we're dealing with, with, with operators, with human factor, there can be errors, there can be equipment. And, and there's other, also other external factors which, which pop up, let's, let's say, with, without knowing that they're happening, you know, or, and we don't find out until it's too late. So we need to be able to give the operator um, uh, the ability to, to, to look at information and to monitor the process so that the operation itself is, is under control, if you will. And so we were, in that sense, we wanted to provide configurability to the register so that you can set things up that are appropriate for the particular operation that they're doing in whatever market they might happen to be. And again, those are different from market to market. And the fourth and last one, and which is a very important one, this is probably one of the, uh, has been uh, one of the most important requirements from customers has been they want to monitor and control and manage their business and their operations. And for that, they need information. For that, they need data. 
Uh, obviously, the, the, the most important function of a meter and a register on a meter is being able to capture that because you need to control, as we will know, sometimes uh, or many times the uh, register becomes the, you know, the, 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 the cash register, the meter itself with the register, the cash register for the operation. So we need to be able to, to, to derive all this information that not only controls, for example, the, the custody transfer aspect of things, but also allows them to control, you know, inventories, uh, you know, they, they can keep track of maintenance uh, or, or, or things that happen uh, or things that, that affect the operation, right? So all of this information to be gathered and be accessible and, and obviously be able to utilize, which is important for, for the customer. So these four things form the, what I would call the cornerstones of, of the design uh, of our platform. So if you look at the LCRIQ, and I'm going to uh, do this here for example's sake. Let, let's take a look at uh, it physically as you see the IQ today, okay? One of the first things that you'll notice is that there is no red selector button on the IQ. And, and there's a reason for that. Uh, it, it's not that the red selector button was bad or anything, but we just evolved from it and we wanted to do something even better. So if we, if we look at uh, what we have, we wanted to provide intuitive and guided operation, as we said, if you recall from, from, the, from the previous slides. And, and for that, we obviously, we like the LCR 600, we also included uh, a seven inch display. It's a full color display, as you can see, very clear to see. Uh, this is tempered glass. Uh, the keypad, as you can see, uh, it's elastomeric and it's certainly non-conductive. And um, it, it is also, if, if any product or, or gets splashed on it, it, it will not affect it and it's sealed. So nothing will be seeping inside or leaking inside to the to the register, if you will, causing problems, right? And if you look at the at the keyboard itself, you can see that obviously there's alphanumeric keys here, which are used to input information, right? Uh, or values, if you will. Uh, he, these are the navigation keys. And you need this navigation key because as information gets presented here on the screen, you need to make selections, right? You need to go up and down, or you need to go from screen to screen, right to left. And once you hit a, a certain point in which you want to open that particular field to either input or make a change, if you're programming, et cetera, you know, you, you use the OK to, to, to open it. And when you put input the value or whatever selection you make, you hit OK and, and it'll, it'll go back uh, in, into with your selection, right? into the program. The body itself is die cast aluminum. Um, and one of the things you're also going to notice, those of you who've used LCR2 and LCR600, is you don't see any hinges here on the sides. The door opens here onto the left. The hinges are here, but because they're uh, internal and they're telescopic hinges, and we protected those because in some cases, in some areas, you know, we've had some issues uh, with the hinges out there, right? Uh, depending on the condition of operation, right? Where they were located. Um, the other thing to note is obviously uh, on the, the keys are backlit, just like they were with, with some of our other registers. And uh, the important thing is also this, this keypad is replaceable. And it's replaceable independently, just as well as, as, as the display is. So we, we, we gather those from uh, the uh, previous, again, designs. We're going to talk a little about in, in, in uh, detail here about the smart keys. Uh, and there's a reason why I, I separated them. So let's move on to one other thing that's important. If you notice on the side, on the right side, because we don't have that selector key and we don't have that little cover um, that we open up and we, you know, we, we break the seal and we take off the, and we put it in the six o'clock position to enter into programming or calibration mode, what we've incorporated in the LCRIQ on the side here, on the right-hand side, bottom right hand, is the weights and measures um, calibration seal. So it's basically a screw, and here it's, it's just mo mo showing you the screw. You don't need to pull it out. You just release it or or you you screw it in, right? And, and the way the seal that you had with the previous LCR2 and LCR600, the way it works is you see there's a hole on top of the, on top of the, uh, the, the screw here, and then on the, on the front cover and on the back cover. So this is where the seal would come, and it obviously it would be sealed. Now, another little interesting thing about IQ, and I'm jumping ahead to this, is that anytime anybody accesses, in other words, cuts off the seal and uh, unscrews, you know, loosens the, the bolt, is it better than the screw, it loosens the bolt, uh, this action gets registered into the actual register memory. So there's always an, an, an audit trail, if you will, to these actions, and even when changes are made, 
you know, those are registered as well in the memory of the, of the register. So uh, those are some advances certainly that we made in function in the functionality. All right, let's let's get over to the uh, smart keys. Uh, the smart keys are, are are just what they what they're uh, the function is exactly as, as the name calls smart, right? And the reason is that because of the way the the LCRIQ operates, depending on what mode in what screen you are, above each of the keys each of the keys, excuse me, you will have labels, and this will as you see over here, this will guide and this will also limit what the operator can choose. So depending again on the screen, on the function that he is, you know, if, if there's nothing on, if there's no heading on top of the key, if you press the key, nothing will happen. If you press here, you're going to show details as it reads over here. If you're going to, this, th this is a screen that's showing that's in delivery mode, which is yellow. That's also intuitive, right? And when it's uh, inactive, it's white. So in, in this delivery mode, he can actually press this button and end the delivery and, and print the ticket, right? Or he can stop it. And how does he know that? Well, it's labeled on with each of these smart keys. So these smart keys are very important and very key to the operation of the LCRIQ. Okay, so operating the LCRIQ can be an, as easy to operate as an LCR2 uh, with, 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 uh, with a pump and print uh, option or action, if you will. Uh, because it's as simple as, you know, here you have the, the, the gray screen or the white screen, right? And you see that this particular smart key is labeled as start. So the operator can go and press start, assuming that everything is connected and everything's, uh, uh, the, the process has been followed, right, with safety. But then in, once he's done, here, here's on a delivery mode, if, he's fin if he wants to finish and do this manual delivery, this same key that was over here when it was start, when it was on manual delivery, now it becomes end and print. So as long as he presses end and print, it'll stop and it'll send, you know, obviously the transaction over to the, whether it's a, it's a, a Bluetooth printer, or in this case, you know, it's a wired printer, you know, the slip printer that my colleagues have discussed and, and you'll have your ticket. So it can be as simple as an LCR2, or you can have more uh, uh, functionality and more actions. For example, if you're going to be doing presets or you're going to be, um, you have to take into account, for example, different actions that you want uh, the operator to take. OK, so. Uh, one of the important things that we've also taken over from 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 in this case, the LCR 600 is we've got these error messages. So if for whatever reason, you know, uh, in this case, for example, the, 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 the operation, the, the delivery did not start. Why? Because there was something there was a problem with the printer, right? It was, there was no uh, ticket in the printer. Uh, the, there was disconnected, somebody turned it off or something happened and they won't let it start. But at the same time, the LCRIQ can be programmed so that if, if you establish certain parameters for the operation of certain uh, things that need to take place or when when in, in operation, you know, there's there are certain thresholds that are programmed into certain functionalities depending on the device, the additional device that are, let's say, uh, uh, surpassed, then it will stop the operation and it will give uh, an error message. So this has been incorporated and evolved into even further with the LCRIQ. And the, the nice thing about it is the operator will be able to see this and usually will get simple instructions how to address. I think we lost you guys. There we go. Yeah. Pedro, uh, are you there still, Pedro? Pedro. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. I just got cut out, but I'm back. I'm okay. back here. So can you You're see back. my screen? Yes, welcome back. All welcome right. Ahead. I apologize. I don't know what happened. Uh, must have been one of my colleagues pressing some button or other. Anyway. So, uh, but but you can see my screen, all right, uh, Jeff? Yes, Peter, you're fine. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna proceed. Sorry about that, uh, everybody. All right, I was talking about the the real on time screen diagnostics. So the operator, when he is in delivery mode, for example, and it stopped for some reason, he will be able to access the diagnostics, and, and these are the different screens that he can see. And as you can see. All the, the the equipment and or for example uh, functions for example you know it's a pulser etc. 
um, is going to be activated. It, it's going to show a yellow. And if that particular one happens to fail, like in this one, it, it, for whatever reason, stopped, the red would represents the red represents the uh, uh, error in that particular field. So the operator will know. So if he's stuck somewhere, he can call back the, the office and say, hey, this is what's happening. What are my next steps? Uh, you know, what, what do I do next? OK, um, let's talk a little bit about the specs. Obviously, we're a little short on time, so I apologize for running through this, but it's important. Um, so uh, obviously, it's, it's a waterproof and, and corrosion resistant enclosure. That's important to note. Uh, temperature uh, range is fairly much uh, similar to our other uh, registers. We still operate on from 9 to 28 volts. So when you're using valves or other things that you're connecting and you're controlling, you need to mind that. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, the, the, you're limited by, by what kind of voltage, in this case, the register holds, so that the solenoids that operate valves, for example, need to be also within, within that range, right? Um, the important here to note here in terms of communication, uh, just like uh, Bill had mentioned uh, in, for, the, for the register for the LCR 600, the, um, uh, the LCR IQ, has specifically in this case two RS-232, I'm not going to read it for you, but I think you can, and 488 communication ports. Uh, there, there's there's an additional two RS-485 dedicated COM ports, and, and you'll see why we need all this functionality. And obviously one of the, here's where we really begin to differ, uh, you know, some of the functionality of the, of the IQ. The IQ has integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functions. In other words, they exist there, and if you use them, they're there for you to use, and if you don't, well, they, they still sit there. And what, 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 how does that work? And we'll see there's an internal antenna that's provided with the unit, and that's the basic, uh, the, the basic supply, if you will, right? If you need more range, there, there's an uh, external antenna that can be used, all right, for extended range. Uh, the actual register as it is uh, offers one uh, 4 to 20 milliamp output, but expandable to up to, up to seven. Um, and here, um, when we talk about the different uh, other outputs or inputs, for example, we have digital inputs and digital outputs, six of them each, okay? And independent of that, we still have solenoid outputs. We have RTD probe input. This is for the temperature compensation. We have an optical sensor input. And, and just like with the other registers, if you're going to put, if you want to take pulse signal out of the register, you can scale it up and, you know, for example, using uh, additive injections or uh, as Bill mentioned displays or if you're sending information to a PLC, et cetera, the IQ also has that uh, ability. If we take a look at the board th that it has, and this is the basic board, um, and sorry, it's a bit of a jumble here, but you can see it mounted on an IQ. Um, th the board has a, a, a USB uh, connection. Here's where you could do the where you would do the, the, the software upgrades, if you will. Um, it also has a, an SD card that can be used there in terms of memory. It has, um, here is the antenna, the internal antenna for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Here is a connection port for a, a LAN cable for Ethernet. Um, and obviously the layout is quite different. It is not the same board as the LCR2 and LCR600, even though it looks the same color, but it's not, it's a totally different board. Obviously it's much more uh, functionality to it. Um, so let's move ahead. And certainly I don't wanna go through all these cause you've seen them already, but this is the basic uh, offerings that we did even up to uh, the LCR600, uh, which we can do with the IQ, you know, in terms of hooking up these different devices or, 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 or valves or, but we this puts us into the next uh, range of things that that IQ offers, and and we talked about adaptive sensing if you if you recall from the first slides, um, and this allows the IQ through all those digital inputs, and and analog input, uh, to communicate with any of these external devices, right? That we list that we show here. Obviously, this is not a, a, an all inclusive, and it's not a limited list. But for example, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we, we, you'll see that there's tank gauging, water, uh, DP, uh, dead man, uh, the displays, uh, emergency stops, um, obviously communicating with uh, uh, printers, et cetera, uh, temperature compensation, um, and also the functionality of surrounding uh, CAN bus, which we provide with, with the LCRIQ. All right, now, when there are 
I remember I mentioned that with the basic board, there was one uh, analog input. Uh, most of these devices will communicate through through analog, you know, 4 to 20 milliamps. And so what will happen is if you have more than one device, for example, if you have water sensing and, and, and you have tank gauging to, for an example, you're going to need more than one input. And so in order to expand the input and output capability, there's an additional board called SenseIQ. Now, not everybody needs it, so we didn't include it in the package, but obviously, at least on the basic LCR IQ, you'll see that the MLX IQ uh, includes it already, but for the for the standard LCR IQ, uh, it does not, but it can be added on later. And this provides six additional analog inputs. Remember, we said expandable to seven, so it's the one that's on the, on the, on the main board plus D6, uh, additional four digital inputs, and an additional four digital outputs, uh, which allows you know all these uh, outside devices to send information to the IQ and gather that data and then include it either on transaction or or log the readings from some of these de from these devices so that they they're, they're kept in the memory and they can be extracted or used depending on what the customer or what the operation requires. So this functionality is as you can see is it's quite above and beyond what what LCR two or six hundred we're able to do. And all of this is basically contained, right? Uh, it, within the, the LCRQ uh, memory in terms of the readings. Um, here's an example, uh, water detection. Uh, th this is very big in aviation as, as we will know, but I can tell you right now that there's people in the refined fuel business, at least in my region, uh, that are looking at this because they wanna control the quality of the, of the in this case, diesel that they're consuming. Uh, you know, they have obviously problems with either generators or equipment when the water gets in there. So water detection has become very important. And you can activate this functionality within the LCRIQ. Uh, and, and you know, if you have the device, then, you know, hook it up and program uh, the thresholds, et cetera, right? All right, uh, another example is the uh, tank gauging. And tank gauging, is, is very interesting. In this case, we were talking about gauging the tank in, in the truck. And so the operator not only can be making his delivery, but he can also determine how much product he has um, in his tank, right? And, and this can be done, obviously, uh, connected to a tank gauge itself, right? Or it can be input manually. In some cases, some customers uh, don't wanna go through the expense of putting a, a tank gauge on, on the tank because you know, they don't want to retrofit, et cetera, the cost uh, considerations. So they manually use this and, and, and you can do that. You can set it up so you can have manual input. Obviously it requires entry, uh, but you can manage the tank, everything from the name to the levels, et cetera, and, and, and the products. Now, in some cases, for example, in, in some markets, we have uh, trucks that have more than one compartment. So here's an example of where in, the, in, this, in this case, they, they have four, compartments, right? And so they've got gauges and, and level for each of those compartments. You can go up to 12, from one to 12. And, and as you can see, obviously, you know, you, 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 you determine 12 is a bit too much really, but uh, you know, you, you can see where added inputs and outputs come into play if you're gonna be having, uh, you know, uh, multiple devices on the one hand, or in the, in the, in the case of, of, of tanks, you know, you've got a mul multiple uh, compartments to, to 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 look at or to measure, right? Uh, I want to go back to something that's really important, and and I know one of my colleagues is going to call my attention if I don't mention it. This is really important here. When tank, when you consider tank gauging, uh, auto calibrating the, the the tank measurement is very important, right? And so, I'm I'm going to read this statement here so I can say it precisely. It says, when combined with an approved tank level gauge with four to twenty milliamp output it auto-generates a precise tank strapping profile. This is really important because, you know, if, 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 you, if, if the gauging is not done properly and it's not reliable, then it's, it's, it's not very good, right? So uh, I just wanted to, to put that out there because it, it is an important aspect that also takes place with LCRAQ. Okay. Um, let's, add some other let's talk about some other functionality that the IQ brings to the table. My colleagues talked about our ability to control valves, and you saw the picture of this particular valve, which is what we call a two-stage valve. It's a control valve, and certainly the IQ does it. You know, this is a this is a valve that would be mounted, let's say, on a meter mounted on a truck, 
But if the if the LCRIQ would be mounted or any other register would be mounted, let's say on on equipment that's uh, that's installed in the stationary in a plant, if you will, you have um, you know obviously inline online valves that are also two states. But aside from that, we can not only do two state valves with an LCRIQ. As you can see here, we can do digital valves. So we control digital valves. And all the logic, of course, is in, inside the, the digital valve. These are screenshots that I took from IQ, and, and, and which shows obviously all, all, the, all the stages that you go into, you know, when you initiate the flow, and then you go into full flow, and then, and then for the closing, right? For these two stage valves, as we will know, all we gotta do is, is obviously select two stage preset valve, and we input the S1 close quantity, which is the, the closure between the first and the second stage, and, and then we're set, right? But we can operate either one of those valves. All right, um, as you saw from the previous pictures, and, and, and I apologize that I don't show, but you can see it here as an example, uh, you can configure the screens. This is part of helping the operator see the information that's important or that the company deems important for the operator to see. We can input up to two columns with six bits of information or six lines of information on each column. And this is what he would see, for example, on his idle screen. But on his delivery screen, if he wants to see them, uh, if you recall, there, there was a, 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 uh, one of the smart keys that said show details, he can press that button and the columns will appear. And they, they could be, made, you know, they could be flow, it could be time, it could be, there's a number of different things you can select and you go in there and you select them and you uh, and you program them, if you will, so that they're viewable to the operator, right? And this will help him determine uh, whatever it is that you want him to see, whatever parameters or or whatever readings you want you want him to see. Figure that. Um, this is another uh, interesting thing that, that that's been developed, and it was mentioned for LCR 600, but I think it's seen it. This is probably the most effective that I've seen it in terms of, of, a, of a register um, on with our large digit, large digit display, we have the opportunity to split the screen. So if you're in, for example, in dispensing or some type of retail applications, uh, you, you can see from the, 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 like in a gas station, for example, right? This is the cost of what's being delivered. This is the actual volume of, of what's being delivered. There's an option to show, in this case, the, the, the flow rate, Right and 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 the volume that that that's being delivered. Again, you see these configurable columns here. In this case, they select the day, time, uh, presets, the remaining preset, uh, flow rate, etc. So we also have the ability to do this with, with with LCRIQ. So it's very flexible. There's a lot of functionality and there's a lot of configurability. All right. Obviously, I'm not going to go through through all of these. But I, I'd like to I'd like to point out uh, a couple of different ones here in terms of what you can configure. Capturing all that information from all these devices, or for that matter, for example, even just the simple transactions, however simple and basic they might be, you can set in the memory of the IQ, you know, how much time, you know, it's going to be uh, the the logging of these readings are going to be, or the retention of the transactions, if you will. And, and this is very important because you can do, uh, and on my next screen, I think I show it, but you can do up to 365 days of memory. So you can continue to save uh, until the, the memory gets full, which, which, is, which is quite a bit, or you can just do it in, in periods, right? And in some countries and some of my customers, uh, they require that they, they save the last six months from the date, for example, that an audit takes place, right? So not only if even if the LCRIQ is transmitting that information over to you know some back office uh, or what have you, uh, the, the the memory of the of the uh, IQ is saving all those transactions so that for example auditors come in, they can check exactly what the raw data coming out of the LCRIQ was versus what let's say the the company reported if you will if there happens to be an internal audit or an external audit. But, but it, it's all there and you can determine and you can program what that uh, data logging uh, period or, or retention period for that matter is. So, so this is uh, uh, very important. Uh, certainly we talked about IO settings that has to do with the different devices that you have and, and, and you know it's got different parameters of operation. Uh, there's thresholds, et cetera, that, that, that you, can, you can set up. 
you can set up, uh, uh, for example, flow rate if you want to protect a, a meter, for example, and uh, so that the operator does not exceed a certain flow rate or that it doesn't go be below a certain flow rate as well. Um, it can stop the operation and it will create a, 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 a message or an error message uh, which will be stored as well, but it will let him know that, hey, you know, you, you've surpassed this threshold and it's going to stop. And this is the reason why it would stop. Um, certainly the other configurations of day, time, uh, <clears throat> the, the columns that I mentioned um, are all, uh, uh, you know, they're, and they're fairly basic. And, and you know, you, when you have a copy of this presentation, you'll be able to see all these details. Um, okay, let me move on to the next slide. And this is an important one because when we talk about communication, obviously, um, you know, it's important to be able to, to, to know what means the LCRIQ has to communicate. Now, in this case, the IQ having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth integrated through an antenna, you know, it, it, it can communicate directly, for example, to a third party device. And then this can be, you know, uh, a tablet, it, it can be a cell phone. Um, and depending on, on the device that it's communicating with, you know, we have uh, SDKs, software developer kits for Windows, we have them for Android. And certainly, you know, uh, third parties can can develop their, their own apps um, and, and to interface with, with their devices, right? Now, uh, one of the values of doing this, and I don't want to get too lost into it because there's not much time, but, you know, the, the devices can be used for, for, for customer databases or what have you. And obviously, they can also be communicating to the back office, right, through these devices. So in this case, the IQ could be communicating directly or the IQ could, communi could be communicating to the device and the device to the office. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, installed or fixed uh, uh, applications, right, uh, you can certainly wire the, the IQs over back to the back office, right? Uh, that's an option or you can use obviously, you know, Wi-Fi, sending information to Wi-Fi network. Um, now certainly, the development uh, um, uh, of, of an interface is important because it needs to be able to speak the same language. The LCP protocol that we have is open. It's open source protocol. And, and you know, when you get the SDKs, you know, you, you get all the codes and everything so that, you know, the interface can be written and the information that's necessary can be extracted uh, versus having to export everything that the, the LCRIQ produces, which might be a lot more than what's necessary, right? So depending on what the structure what the architecture of, of what each customer wants to 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 have in terms of of, ma of data and and how they want to manage this data you know they're they're going to develop you know their, their interface uh, uh accordingly all right uh here here i got ahead of myself in the, in the other slide but the, obviously uh transaction history can store 365 uh, days of data and what it is that you want to store these are just transactions this would be for example each, each sale uh, or each transfer if you will um, but along with that as i said uh, we have we can we keep a historical audit log all the access all the changes that were made to the register of a date time etc uh, event logs would be the, the the error messages or or the messages that 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 for example stopped an operation so that when when, when the company is looking at you know what happened in this particular uh, unit, you know, they, they can they can determine in question and or clarify whatever needs clarifying in terms of why that happened or if it's happening too often, does it, you know, is there maintenance involved, whatever. Uh, certainly, I want to highlight here also the, the accessibility to the LCP data, you know, communication protocol because we have an open protocol. Uh, so we're, we're, we have a, we have a person, a persons that, that, that can assist on integration. We obviously don't do the integration ourselves, but we can assist on, on the integration um, as it's uh, being, uh, as it's taking place, excuse me. All right, uh, I can't believe I'm doing this this fast, so I apologize, but um, just wanted to give you this snapshot because there's so much to talk about, as I said in the beginning about IQ. There are two main menus in IQ. Uh, one is obviously the main menu here that you see, and here you have uh, the delivery details, wireless connectivity, transaction data, diagnostics, and then there's the setup menu. Okay, and this would be the setup menu now. Well, obviously, the setup menu is for programming. And the reason I, I, I'm showing this, and, and, and I'm kind of dipping my, my, my toes in the water, as we say here in this country, um, is that, and not getting any deeper, is that I wanted to show you that these, the access to these menus can be limited 
or obviously open, right? I would imagine that the setup menu is going to be only for those people who are authorized, but they don't even need to have access to the main menu. They could operate the register without having access to them. And there's a way through security in which you can have access to, uh, for example, only the main menu, certainly the, um, not the setup menu, and the ones who are to have access will have a password that will allow them to have that access, right? And, and you can program that on the security aspect of, let me go back to this one, um, in the security aspect here of the setup menu, right? And that's where you set up the passwords and the access to the different people uh, that are allowed or not, uh, obviously, to 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 into that particular area of the register. All right. Uh, so let me talk about M uh, LCRIQ and MLXIQ. This is the zone one version of the LCRIQ, kind of contrasting with the LCR2, which had the class one div one and the class one div two, right? The enclosure is different, but everything else is the same. All the functionality, uh, everything that I've explained to you that you're capable of doing, and there's a lot more, of course, um, but it, it's contained and, and it is in a zone one enclosure. So if it happens to be an application where it needs to be uh, 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 complied with, with zone one, then you know we have the option here with the MLX IQ. And again, I want to reiterate that the MLX IQ, because of its nature in terms of its application, is going to come with both the standard motherboard and the Sense IQ included in it. The LCR IQ can come just with a standard motherboard, but it can also, you know, the the it can be ordered with Sense IQ or it could be incorporated at a later date if there, there's need for those inputs and outputs, additional ones. All right. Uh, in terms of the uh, mounting, the LCR IQ, the basic LCR IQ is, is meter mount. It fits exactly where the LCR2 and LCR600 is, so there's no modification. You can pull it out and, and put it, pull out the old one, let's say, and put in this new one. As you can see, here's a truck application. Uh, this is an aviation uh, uh, as well application. Um, and But there's an option also which allows you to, instead of remote mounting this with meter mount, you can mount it on a panel. As you can see here, for example, in this particular uh, vehicle, right? And if you're going to mount it on a panel and not on top of the of the of the meter, then obviously you're not on top of the uh, uh, the transmission of the meter. So you would you need to use in this case a pod, right? An external pulsar connected over into the register. And certainly this register would not have an internal pulsar as well, right? Because this is the the pulsar for it, this external one. This one would have its pulsar inside here. The MLX IQ is panel mount as well. Now, in some cases, we've had some customers that have uh, created or uh, you know, they've been supplied a bracket to mount the IQ <clears throat> on top of a meter, but not connected in the same fashion because obviously it doesn't have this meter mount here, this footprint, if you will. But there are some brackets that can mount the LCR IQ on top of a meter. Uh, this is to highlight a bit the uh, difference with uh, uh, LCR 600 and uh, mounting an LCR IQ. As you can see, there's some uh, before we came out when we talked, uh, we did some voice of the customer with some OEMs, et cetera, and they were concerned about, you know, exchanging one for the other in, in, in the back part of a, of a truck that's covered and if it would fit or not. And as you can see, the difference is not very much. It, it seems a lot bigger, but uh, and it is a little bit, but not not by much. For example, we've got uh, 8.1 uh, inches here height and here this is 9.9 .9, so it's it's roughly two inches higher right and even if you, you're opening the door as you can see you're still within it's not at the same angle as the lcr 600 so just to illustrate the fact that you know upgrading and retrofitting is is, is possible without uh, major modifications or any modifications at all all right uh, I, I already mentioned this that uh, that the keypads are replaceable um, and, and they're they're backlit, uh, they're they're sealed, so you know, and they are available. Um, and finally, I just want to mention that one of the other things that we incorporated into LCRAQ, and I think service people appreciate that, or people who do service, um, yeah, each input and output has an LED indication. For example, here's the fact that uh, you know here, here's a wire connected over here, and it's not that there's something wrong, but it's just pointing out that you know there there, there, there there's a connection here. That, that maybe they shouldn't be or, or that needs to be looked at, right? And so all of these connections have these LED indicators, which makes it much easier instead of having to use a voltmeter. I mean, you can still use a voltmeter if you want, but it makes it much easier and quicker.
right. Uh, I want to apologize for talking like a parrot and a thousand miles an hour. Uh, hopefully when you get a copy of the presentation, you can slow it down and repeat it. Uh, there's much more information. Uh, again, there are other courses which will go much more in depth. Um, but uh, obviously our platform doesn't just, uh, you might say, stay static with LCRIQ. We are working on different things. And as you can see here from these summaries here, uh, we we foresee you know a, an increase in the requirements from the different markets as things evolve uh, for for more sensing and communication technologies. Certainly, regulatory um, and and or oper operational challenges are are also you know things that drive uh, some of the change and some of the evolution. And uh, fueling information always a need for information uh, to be used in in one manner or another, and it varies from customer to customer, et cetera. So. Uh, our platform continues to to churn, if you will. Uh, we're doing more and more things, and and so there's going to be a lot more that, that we can probably talk to you guys about LCRAQ in the future. So again, I apologize for talking like a parrot, but uh, I needed to do this uh, uh, in order to, to to get through. So uh, Jeff, uh, yeah. I don't know if you want to. If there's questions already, or uh, if we uh, want to do that. I want to touch on one more thing that we neglected to get into the presentation here uh, when we're setting up setting up. Um, uh, Pedro, can you put yourself on mute? Uh, yes, yes. And uh, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, if you can uh, uh, let the screen go, please. Thank you. I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Uh, one other feature that uh, we didn't get into the presentation today is uh, our, our, our network ability uh, with the LCRIQ. With our previous products, uh, when when uh, Wyatt and, and Bill were talking about the LCR2 and the LCR600, uh, you know, they had a box called the multiplex box, and the purpose of that box was to take uh, two meters and combine them and print information or share uh, the, the RS45 line through that multiplex box. Um, of course, that multiplex box, uh, it, it will work with the LCR IQ if, if you so desired. It's not preferred, however, because we now have the ability to basically multiplex uh, registers together or what we call pass through uh, printing and pass through LCP. So we can take multiple res registers and through one of those additional 45 lines that we now have on the LCR IQ, we can daisy chain the registers together in, in a network and then connect to a master computer or, or tablet or to one printer. So uh, again, we don't need an external device now to do that. All we need to do is in install a, a, a cable and it's a kit that controls cells. And then we can take uh, registers and, and link them together. Uh, you, know, uh, you have one master register and then as many uh, uh, external or secondary registers uh, that you want to put in the chain and you can pass information all the way through that chain uh, to the printer or to the uh, to the to the third party computer. So if you're interested in that feature and learning more about it, this is actually what I have on the screen right now is the actual uh, manual that we just recently released on this. Um, it's available, uh, I think, on version 110 of the LCRIQ software or later. Uh, actually, the pass through printing has been out there a little bit longer, but the pass through LCP and the daisy chaining of, of actually being able to pass through LCP and convert from 232 to 45 like the multiplex box would do. Uh, that's all built in now uh, to the software and, and available on the LCRIQ, again, version 110 or later for that pass through LCP. But this manual is out there online. Uh, I believe Wyatt was talking about the online manuals. Uh, if you go to the LC website, uh, www.lcmeter.com, and go under the resources tab, that's where you'll find all of the online manuals as well as the electronic manuals. So we have both PDF versions. So if you're a PDF and you like to print out uh, manuals, uh, you can do that. And then we have the electric online, uh, electronic online manuals uh, as well uh, if you want to download um, or, or bring it up on your phone. So uh, with that, I'm going to unshare my screen and um, we'll open it up if anybody has any questions. If not, I will let you know this is kind of concluding today's presentation. Again, uh, I'll, I'll say now thank you for everybody attending.
uh, the session today. Um, again, it's every Wednesday morning, uh, every other Wednesday morning. So the next class will be uh, June 9th. Uh, and that will be a, a, a more deeper dive focus into the technical side of the LCR too. Hey, uh, Jeff. But, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Yeah, we, we do have a question. Uh, you covered the, the, the pass through here uh, from uh, Mohammed Murtaza here. Um, saying that uh, pass through printing through uh, through a single register, I think we, we had that answered. Uh, second question is: uh, Is there an option to authorize fueling transaction through RFID? Ah, okay. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't see the questions come through. It's so okay. uh, today we don't have an option to authorize a fueling via RFID. Um, so uh, unfortunately, no, we we don't have that technology uh, today. Uh, we do have several third parties that do interface to our registers, however, that do do technology like that. So um, there are, um, uh, well, actually, let me back up. I'm kind of answering that the wrong way. We, we do have a product uh, that, that, that can interface to the register itself. Uh, it, it's through a DMS uh, uh, m uh, module that can be connected to the LCR. It can be connected to actually to, to LCR2, LCR600, or uh, now LCRIQ, but it's a completely separate interface from the register. So uh, that's a whole another class we can talk about. So if that's something you're interested in, we can contact you offline there and talk a little bit more about uh, what, what uh, that looks like. Uh, but again, there are third party companies out there as well that interface that have uh, RFID technology and, and permissives that they can they can communicate to the register via third party and do that control. Uh, and then I see the third question is whether uh, will there be an option uh, to have GPS location for every fueling transaction that takes place. Uh, currently on the register, we don't have a GPS input. However, uh, we've been kind of in the works on an application uh that we didn't talk about here today again that would be a separate uh, course but uh, that application when connected to the register uh can can get the gps location for each and every transaction and and, and provide that information so. are there any other questions out there from anybody yeah yes couple, please a couple more jeff um uh one is uh with regards to uh Come in here. Uh, I'm losing my my string. Um, uh, so one of them was the ability to access the internet. Um, do we have a, a sim cellular SIM card or slot for cellular access? Okay, great. Um, so I mean, as far as accessing the, accessing the internet, I mean, it, when I think of that, I think in terms of you know, do I can I can I get on Google from 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 my register? It's it's not that type of connectivity, but uh, obviously. Uh, Pedro talked about the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi connectivity. Those are two ways that you can connect to the register from another device. Uh, so in theory, you're, you're reaching the internet that way. Uh, you know, uh, the other is uh, we do have actually a slot in, embedded onto the onto the IQ2 uh, in the future expand to cellular, but at this point in time today, the software is not in there for that. We found that uh, the majority of our customers are using uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth today to do that. And, you know, they're connecting a phone or a tablet or something to that device, and that device is connected to the internet or has a SIM card, you know, where it transmits the, wire, the data wirelessly. So, uh, but today, again, uh, on, although we have the, the ability to expand to it today, we don't have a uh, cellular SIM card uh, capability inside the register. Yeah. Uh, in, in, other, in other ways, people are doing that too, is they'll connect maybe a middleware device like Raspberry Pi, um, or you can um, you can get data you know, from the register um, you know, using a mobile, a handheld device uh, as, as middleware. Sorry. Um, to address uh, Terry's question, hi Terry. Um, for the tank level input, um, right now, yes, it's only limited to 420. Uh, we do, our, our inputs actually are designed to be able to handle zero to five. Uh, we just didn't incorporate into that into the software today. Uh, but uh, as far as the hardware, it's there. We just would have to have to do a little software tweaking there. But the four to 20 signal uh, right now is the standard that most people seem to use. If you do have a zero to five that you're looking at, let me know. We can talk separately offline on that, Terry. Uh, and as far as Modbus inputs uh, today, we don't have Modbus on uh, the IQ. Um, uh, Alpha um, does the LCR IQ do real-time data transfer to the cloud via 
Wi-Fi or cell. Um, so again, this this comes back to the the the, the interface between uh, the third party uh, devices uh, or some sort of handheld or software that's that's connected to the register. Um, so the register itself isn't isn't sending it to the cloud per se. It's sending it to a device that's communicating, or like Dan mentioned, to a Raspberry Pi or some other type of, of system that's connected and it's connected to the cloud, sending that information, you know, back to 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 the, wherever it's going. Uh, let's see. Abdullah, uh, since the LCR IQ can be connected to the PC directly, uh, can you tell? We can extract the data transaction Excel file format. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, today, yes, they actually can be. Uh, in most cases, you can you can you can extract uh, the transaction data or that any of those log files that Pedro was mentioning. That can be done via USB, obviously, because we have the USB port on the registers. Uh, but now through the software, we do have the ability to actually extract uh, transaction files through the Bluetooth Wi-Fi or even the Ethernet connectivity that's available on the unit. Uh, we can get it. We'll have classes specifically on uh, anybody who's asking questions about the connectivity piece of this. Uh, later sessions towards August time frame, uh, we're going to be bringing Travis Dillard in and myself. We'll be talking more about the connectivity side of LCRIQ, getting in depth to the wireless, the Bluetooth uh, and the Wi-Fi on the register and talking about you know how we can set up a FTP network to the register. So there, there's more coming uh, on on that side of things. So uh, stay tuned, and and we'll get deeper into the details on that. Uh, but if you have some immediate questions, feel free to come to me directly, and I can get you in you know in touch with Travis on that. All right. Were there others? I'm I'm quickly scanning through, Dan. I didn't. Yeah, see. one more is a question around the percentage of water sensing. Um, you know, we, we don't really measure it in percentage. We do it in PPMs, uh, depending on the settings, but uh, I'll let you uh, field that one, Jeff. Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if I understand that. But yeah, so the, the way that the water sensing works today is as we work with the, it, again, it's this is geared towards the aviation market today. The sensor that we are inter interfaced with is, is from another company that's out there. And that device, uh, when, when, when they display or when we display their information on the screen, we're taking a 4 to 20 signal from that device. And we're displaying, like Dan mentioned, uh, parts per million of water uh, in fuel. Uh, so as that device is reading, it's outputting a 4 to 20 signal based on the parts per, parts per million of water and fuel. And we have thresholds and things that we can set in there, uh, you know, based on the amount of fuel, uh, water in the fuel, where we can, you know, either put a warning up, flash a light, sound a buzzer, uh, or just completely shut down the system and require someone to enter in a passcode. But all that's done in parts per million. And we have just one hand up, uh, Ahmed Mohammed. Um, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yes, uh, thank you. I'm Ahmed from Iraq, uh, from my learning company. Yeah. I just have a question about uh, maybe we can, while we have uh, LCP protocol, we can uh, connect it to the domes, like in uh, for the Gilbarco Villa route. If it is available, we can treat it as a pump. So if I'm understanding the question, were you asking if we could use the LCP protocol to interface to a pump? No, interface it to the uh, pump controller, like uh, DOMS, PSS 5000. Hmm. It's a pump controller for the four port. Okay, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not familiar. Is anybody else online familiar? You know when when you go to the site for the service station and there's a pump and four port controller controls the pumps and fuel and everything. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just I think if if we can uh, use this protocol to connect uh, the LCR to the uh, pump mm -hmm. controller. Yeah, uh, and sorry, like if, pump. if I can jump in, uh, Marco here. Yeah. We, hey we, had this, we had this question before, um, Forecourt, I think it's a Gilbarco operating system that's used at filling stations. And yeah. um, I think Dan assisted at the time and said, uh, no, we're not, we're not able to integrate with that. Um, we can maybe revisit that. I'll, I'll look up the data. It's been 
question was asked quite a quite a long time ago, but we can we can have a look at that again. But I think the last answer was no, we, we, we cannot integrate to that. Th thanks, Marco. Maybe you and I can circle back on that and then have a discussion uh, with him later on uh, regarding that. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One one more another question, Jeff. Uh, one of our favorites. Um, can we enter a customized field on the home screen? Um, OK, thanks. Uh, so a customized field on the home screen, I, I'm assuming we're may, maybe we're asking like a, a, a special prompt uh, right right now. All this all the information that can be configured on the screen, you know, when we're talking about the customizable screen itself, you know, those those uh, where Pedro was talking about the two columns of data or the main screen on, on, on the front uh, that that obviously is all predetermined data. So you're going through a list of information that's available information inside the register that can be displayed up on the screen. Um, as far as customizable fields, uh, like if you were wanting to you know, manually enter in data, in other words, you're, you, you want something to pop up on the screen where someone has to enter in you know, a, uh, a, a BOL number or, or enter in information. That's what we call a prompt. Uh, and in that case, we are working on software for that. Uh, it's not available today, uh, but it is something that, that's in the works here from Liquid Controls, where eventually we'll be able to do prompts both before and after delivery. So if uh, it, it looks like it even says for resistance and odometer reading. So yeah, that sounds just like a miscellaneous prompt. Um, so yeah, that we're, we're working on that software. Look for that to hopefully here in the, in the short term. Uh, but I don't I don't have a release date on it yet, so I apologize for that. I think that addressed uh, a couple concerns there. I saw Terry ask a similar question as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the intent, guys, is that um, a lot of our questions around the, the fueler to be able to enter in information whether we're around the customer, around the environment, uh, account numbers, license plates, addresses, uh, odometer readings, um, either before the delivery or after the delivery. After the delivery would be some something that would be reportable that happened, you know, during the delivery that they want to tie to to the to the fueling event, so to speak. So that is something that um, we do have software for. Um, we are testing it. Um, we haven't released it yet. Uh, the, you know, we have we do go through a pretty extensive testing process before we release our software, and and that's the phase it's in right now. So yeah, do do look to see that coming here in the near future from us. Hey Dan. <clears throat> yes sir. Yeah, uh, this is Pedro. Uh, listen, uh, I was just going to throw out there that uh, maybe it's a solution or not for what maybe some of those needs or requirements are. Uh, you know, we they can always activate that customer ID and, and input that information before every every delivery and it will be part of the transaction. So that solves maybe part of the problem. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. So we do have a feature in there where uh, we can enter in. Is it one or two fields, Jeff? It's one. one. One, yeah. So, so prior to the delivery, the, we do have the ability to enter uh, one piece of call, variable data um, that uh, that the operator uh, can enter in uh, prior to the delivery. Um, but we're we're expanding on that on that capability. Um, but so, yeah, we do have that piece. That one item is 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 in the in the software set right now. Do we have any other questions out there? Oh, I see another one. It looks like another one just popped up. Uh, You're asking uh, about great, grounding great and overflow question. protection. My favorite subjects. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a great question. Can we interface with an earth earth overfill monitor? Uh, currently today, we don't have that capability. Uh, this is one that's been a hot topic here again at LC uh, discussed and, and we've kind of put together a scope of work to do that. Uh, but it's a matter of getting that implemented in the software. So unfortunately today we don't have that, but I would look for it hopefully here in, in one of our future releases. Any other questions out there?
and you don't at this point you don't have to use the chat function either you can feel free to unmute yourself and just ask the question if you'd like Jeff, I just want to say a couple of things and kind of reiterate for those who left. Um, there's a lot of information, as we both know, and we all know about LCRIQ, and just to have them look for the future uh, courses and uh, touch base with uh, the regionals if they have further questions or they want more information in the short term. Um, because, I mean, we packed, <laughs> you know, I packed in 45 minutes, but you can, you're supposed to discuss in hours, right? And uh, so if there's uh, specific things, the questions that they have or concerns or opportunities, then again, touch base with your regional, uh, look at the recording of the presentation and, you know, uh, go online to 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 get a, a better perspective, I guess, of what we can do. All right, I saw one more question pop up here, but my screen just blanked out. Give me one second here. Uh, I, I believe I know what the question was. Where to go here? It's about compensation. The, yeah, the compensation table. So that, that's a great question. Do we have 60B? Again, this is another one of those hot topics that recently has been coming to our attention again. So we have an engineering request through to our software team to add that uh, into the software. Uh, we're hoping that will be in, in this next release version. Uh, we have several customers looking for that right now. So uh, appreciate that question, um, Vinesh, and we should have it hopefully in this next release. I'll, I'll After this, I'll double check with this and um, we'll, we'll get back in touch with you and, and let you know for sure. <clears throat> Looks like that's it. Yeah, well, guys, again, uh, for whoever's left, thank you again for attending today. Um, <clears throat> like Pedro mentioned, if anybody has any additional questions, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to anybody on our team, uh, the technical service team, the regional managers, uh, uh, even you know, for those of you that aren't distributors, your local distributors. So thanks again for your attention today and uh, look forward to seeing most of you uh, in two weeks from now. So thanks again. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.